All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Q Points, the mobile DJ podcast. I'm Anthony. This is co host. What's Lo. going on, man? Another week, another awesome, awesome studio visit. Another nice Wednesday here What's at going the on? Q Points this studio. Going nuts. What, what's wow. what do we got here? So, well, we're going to talk about it. Uh, this is uh, your speciality over here. Yes, this but, is my uh, light of choice. We're going to review it in a little bit. Yeah, so so what's going on, man? So you had a good week? Good weekend, yeah. Yeah, it was. I would say this weekend was a little different. Um, You know, definitely last weekend was really crazy, like the weekend prior. Yeah, this I mean, past weekend was a little slow. Yeah, I only had two events. Yeah, so. I mean, it was definitely a lighter weekend. I mean, don't forget, we also had Father's Day. Yeah. So Father's Day is typically going to, you know, take away Although, the ironically enough, I... I worked on Father's Day. You did, but like so. So you, he, so uh, he had done a triathlon this uh, weekend for us, and uh, the triathlons they usually do like we do every one every year on Mother's Day. One, mm-hmm. every, they do a lot on Thanksgiving. They do like a turkey trot style thing. So races actually typically do happen on holidays and stuff like that. Don't know why. Yeah, I'm used to that. But because they do the ones that I do with leading arts. Uh, they're usually on holidays like Thanksgiving and right. But you got to. But it's early in the morning. Yeah, but you got to remember so. as far as like you know people are having plenty of backyard parties and stuff like that. But they're really not having DJs for that. Right. You know what I mean? So honestly, take it take it with a grain of salt. Be happy that you had off a yeah. weekend because you know once we kind of you know sure. now we're kind of in full fledged mode again. It's like you got that little break. But you're always wanting to work, which is kind of a nice thing, you know. You're actually, I was supposed to do the event on Sunday morning, and I was like, "Do you want to do it?" Because yeah, they were asking Saturday. where you were, and I was like, "Honestly, I don't I'm know." I'm, I'm, I'm under. <laughs> Honestly, the, I, I have no idea to, where he is. I don't want to be I, anywhere. I, I don't know. Sorry, I got hit by a bus. <laughs> My life insurance policy was up, so I had to, uh, uh, <laughs> had to make that work. But uh, but yeah, so you had a you had a decent week. I know you had a yeah. private event that you did on Thursday, and then so talk about the race. This is the yes. first time you had done so, this race. What did you think? It was a triathlon. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to remember where it was. Port Washington. Port Washington. Yes, yeah, it yeah. was right on the beach. Um, it started off in the water, so we had a portable speaker. It yep. was the the Denon. Do, e- you know the model? EV or something like that. It's a. Uh, it's, it's a good model. It's 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 Great awesome. Model. It's standard for most wireless. It was actually really the first one that they like came out powered. with because ever like once Denon came out with that, everyone decided to copy it. I mean that you know we'll definitely have to review that speaker one day. It's because, solid. It's, I mean they've made upgrades. It's since a solid then, light. But I mean you have four mic inputs. You know you're able to do Bluetooth, SD card. It's got its own built-in microphone and it lasts eight hours on a charge. So I mean you could use it all day long. Which it's is basically awesome. like a, a full powered speaker. Yeah, well, I use it all the time it's, on for it's, beach ceremonies. It's battery it. powered. It has yep. wheels on it. It's an awesome you know? speaker. So it's an absolute I mean, awesome they love that. I don't think they ever had that before because probably not. They kept complimenting me on it. They're like, "Oh, thank goodness you had that because it was so loud. Mm-hmm. We had the microphone. Everybody heard everything. Good. So we sent them off at the beach, and then we ran over to uh, the the finish line where the main setup was, okay. and. Uh, yeah, I was working with Terry. He's good old Terry, man. An MC in the running scene here in Long Island. He's so. like he's like MC meets Jeopardy, because he knows everything about everyone. I always tell you know I always say, but you know he's always, he was announcing. He was he was calling everybody. Oh, he's, he worked really well with him. So I mean, you know, it was definitely nice seeing everybody head on over. Hey, I see you on the TV right now. There you I am. Got you and Terry, <laughs> you guys were working yeah, together. He's, he, he's a legend. He's he's yeah. a living legend. I, I always say, if you need someone's social um, security number in the racing business, you go to him. Yeah, he literally knows guy. everything about everybody. I mean, you'll and be running. It make, it's, I mean, it makes them feel so special when they're running across the finish line. And he goes, here's so-and-so, and their kids are here. And he, and he knows the kids' names. Not even he's that. Like, it's just like, and his grandmother's like, wow. aunt's niece's cousin just had her 30th <laughs> second birthday. Yeah, Thank man. you for you. Like, it was just... It makes you feel so special to, like... When you're doing something that's so strenuous, yeah. you, you finally finish, and here's somebody who appreciates you. So, I mean, I think as an MC, that quality is. Oh just my God, yeah, it's a, and he just loves doing it. So that was that was an amazing event. And so while you were doing that, I was uh, I was getting feeling a little bit better because man, I had a crazy week. I mean, I we, not so much with the DJ, but we had a lot of behind the scenes. We had stuff. a lot of corporate casino nights this week. Okay. We had one on Tuesday in Connecticut uh, on a boat. So oh, I didn't that, know yeah. that you went to Connecticut. Yeah, well, I didn't go. Uh, I'm the I'm the logistics. I make everything work. But we had you know roulette tables and craps tables. You know we had a lot of different um, styles of our different tables go out. So Connecticut, we had a um, a seven table job. And that went on a boat out of uh, one of the ports over there and went to see the Statue of Liberty. Really nice oh, cool. um, event over there. And then 
Two days later, on Thursday, at the Royal Palm in Farmingdale, we had a 14-table job. And it was for the um, the Sons of Italy, they, their scholastic fund, which raises um, all different types of funds for different scholarships that they give to Plain Edge, Beth Page, and the surrounding schools that they give to the kids. And we actually we raised forty grand that night. Wow! Yeah, we raised a lot of money. It was a really it was really cool. I mean, we had so many different tables open. We had craps, roulette. We had eighty people playing in a Texas Hold'em tournament that won a seven night cruise. You know, so it, it was a lot of fun. I got to show off some of the new tables I just had built. So I that, think it's it's such a great thing to do for fundraisers. Dude, because I tell people you, if you, you want to raise if money, you're, if you're going to the casino, people are spending money anyway. Now 100%. you're now you're donating it to right. a good cause. I always tell people. So like, I think when you use integrate, your money here, at least if you're losing, yeah, you're yeah. going to something decent. When you integrate the c- casino games into a fundraiser, right. Everyone wins. Uh, every, yeah, and it, 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 we had a lot of fun. There were some really good prizes. They had a Chinese auction, so basically you would turn in your funny money and whatever you had won, and they would you would get X amount of raffle tickets. Oh, awesome! So I mean, they, they couldn't have been happier with it. It's just it's a lot of logistics going. That's a really that. cool system. Yeah, it, it's just you use the the funny money that you win. Yeah, so we and make the you, funny money, and you then put we, that into a it, raffle. Yeah, where you're you're still winning baskets even right. though you're you're donating your real money. To a good cause. Yeah, and the best I think way, that's really cool. And the way that it works really well is because when you're having a Texas Hold'em tournament, there's plenty of people that are going to be there that don't want to play. So that's why we open the other tables like the roulettes and the blackjacks. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, it's definitely a lot of uh, – it's just a lot of logistics. You know, I mean, it's – you know, we had – I had 17 people working that one job. Yeah, so that's the on a thing. Thursday, and especially a, on a Thursday, a getting that, that many people available, and it, it started at 6. So, you know, a lot of people – I mean, I picked up uh, one of our employees, Tommy. I picked him up right from the Farmingdale train station. Wow. brought him right there because I needed, you know, it's a lot of people, you know, it's yeah. a lot of people on a weekday again, even harder on weekdays, weekends sometimes because, you know, people already have commitments to, especially this past weekend with Father's Day, you know, people are having early graduation parties. Oh, yeah. And speaking of graduations, I've been talking to so many different DJs that we know, and you know this this June is so different because they have like two different weeks now of graduation. So you have like this weekend, which is the 22nd on Saturday, and then you have the following weekend, which is the 29th. And yeah. it's, and like it's not usually it's usually like one graduation weekend boom but it's like this weekend this we'll week see, is like different. What's interesting I feel like is that people are sort of t- taking advantage of the whole summer now. Right. Cuz some graduations are even happening in August. Yeah. So, yeah, we already have a couple books, so right? So it's kind of spreading it out, you know, it, it, it's not just one one or two weeks right after the actual graduation that I people are cramming to get I don't think that's a bad idea either because in. some people are going on vacation, some people just kind of want to like chill out right they just you know especially if you have three four kids you got to like kind of like calm everybody down and get everybody you know back into a consensus that everybody's like chilling out right so i definitely uh i think it's better too because we don't have as many parties on one day don't get me wrong i want as many parties as possible it makes it easier for us but yeah exactly it's a little it gets a little hectic when uh we're all over the place and i never want to spread us too thin yeah. So so uh, so anyway, what else do we have coming up on the show? Because this is kind of a cool show. Yeah, we yeah, we got a couple uh, awesome things. Things we're uh, over. Like I mentioned before, we will be reviewing the Chave Gig Bar Two. And this is like um, your bread and butter. Yeah, this is my like, my light of choice. I, you know, any events that that I do, I'm bringing this. Yeah. You know, I. I mean, it's really an. I, I have one moving unit. heads, but I don't use them as as often as as you do right. for your events, um, because I don't have. The, the trust totems. Trusting, yeah. So and you're also not doing TVs very often. Yeah, I mean, no, dude, I if mean, you're doing a, you know, we've uh, mentioned right. My, my company is very low scale, so mm-hmm. when I'm doing an event and they want the dance floor lighting, this is a perfect light. Yeah, no, I definitely. But before I mean, we talk too yeah, much, yeah, I was about gonna it, say, don't get too far into it. <laughs> uh, we, also, we also have special guest DJ Joe Bun. He will be joining us on Skype later on. Um, he is the creator of the DJ's Vault. Now, this is something that's been spoken about very much on social media. DJs all over. As far as I know, the U.S., probably the world, um, are joining the DJ's vault. Um, it, it's, it's just packed full of content. Yeah. And, again, we'll get into it. <laughs> but um, no, I'm really excited yeah, to have him we're on. Happy he to seems have him like on. a really down-to-earth, you know, nice guy. You know, so I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, um, you know, speaking with him. And then we also, we're going to do something a little different where we're also going to do almost like a forum answer kind of thing going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, You've so had some great questions. We're members of a lot of the DJ groups on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been seeing a lot of people asking like random questions. And I'm 
answering them in my head. Right. We're going to answer them here. You know what? Why don't we give them a shout out on the show Right. and answer their questions to the best of our ability. Yeah. So there's going to be a couple of really cool ones coming up in the next segment. And, uh, just dude, it's another fun show. We got a couple really cool guests lined up for the next couple weeks coming in either in studio or via Skype. And it's, yeah, it's it's really cool that we could do these Skype calls now because we're bringing in people who are from you know North Carolina, yeah, New Jersey. No. Go international soon. Yeah, we're gonna be waking people up. They're gonna have their little their little uh, sock thing that they wear to bed that no yeah, one actually so wears except when you poo. Big thank you to to. GVP Studios. Yes. GVP, Fran, Eric, I see you in there. Yep. Appreciate you. Thank Show you yourselves. <laughs> Show yourselves. There, <laughs> there they are. They are. <laughs> it's not just screens in there. There are human beings away, and they are working away. hard to make this show happen. <laughs> All right. I want to thank you guys. All right. Awesome. So again, where can they find uh, this little old podcast we're putting this together? This little old thing we're doing here. You can find us on QPointsPodcast.com and on Instagram and Facebook at QPointsPodcast. And YouTube? And YouTube at Anthony Garcia DJ Vlogs. That's and, the video and MySpace? version. Uh, MySpace is dead. Come on, bro. Are you serious? <laughs> I put Q Boys as my top follower, it's, man. It's funny how they, they tried to bring it back as MySpace music. It should have came back. But it didn't work out. It was the I best think. for blows Facebook away. Especially as a what? DJ, dude. I used to have, I used to do all the dude, how do you think I learned how to code? Oh, you mean the old MySpace? Yeah, yeah bro, yeah, the old MySpace. Sure. I used to code it. I had all the different lights flash and everything. Yeah, you, you customize your profile. Yeah, man. You had the blog. How so come you, no social networks in this day and age have have caught on to that? It's all like well, it didn't really catch up. I mean it fell short. Yeah, I guess. Really think about it. It's it's unfortunate, man. But. I thought it was cool, man. It was and then you had your top 10 like songs, yeah. your top 10 friends. I would have loved to have that now, though, as a DJ. I mean, especially some of the DJs we know that like really like put a lot of stuff on SoundCloud and everything like that. That'd be a great yeah, you place to showcase your, your own music. Why don't, yeah. why don't people do that anymore? I mean, I guess I do know they have some type of thing on SoundCloud where you can do it on versatile platforms. Well, yeah, you could embed it, but I mean, it's not... Like MySpace. Nothing's like MySpace. Nothing Shout out will Tom. be like MySpace. I miss you, bro. My first real friend online. Yeah, he was all of our first friends. Yeah, man, he was. It wow. was so smart. But Good times. I love how that happens. But yeah, man, so we got That's Joe coming up. That's back when you had the white pants, right? Always wearing the white pants. You've got to wear the white pants. Joe Button's coming on in a little bit. Really excited about that. We got your little thing over here, the gig bar too, which honestly, dude, it's really compact. I mean, the fact when we talk about we got now, the just so you case. guys know, Will hasn't used the gig bar before ever, so. ever. So I am gonna be just like a lot of you guys who are like, oh, what is the meaning of this? So you might learn a little bit about it. I hope I learn. You better be a good teacher and show me something. Uh, I try. I, I mean, try I have this remote. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna do it when we go out. When <laughs> I'm going to have it playing. So. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, so Q Points Mobile DJ Podcast. That's us. Catch us every single Wednesday at noon. Wow, he got it. Finally, it only took how many episodes? Was this 14? Yeah. 13 episodes. <laughs> we finally got it right. You can check us out. You also, always catch me on the on my toes. Text them on the toes, baby. Yeah. And also check out our website, QPointsPodcast.com. Really cool forum. We're going to be starting a Facebook group, which we didn't even get to talk about yet. But there's a lot of really cool co- stuff coming up. It's in the works. It's always in the works, baby. <laughs> we're going out in style. Q Points Mobile DJ Podcast. We're going to be back, and we're going to have some more stuff to talk about. I'm we excited. Are you excited? right back. I am super excited. <laughs> Q Points Podcast. We'll be back after this.
swear, we partied that whole, that entire commercial break. <laughs> Q Points Podcast, we are back. Welcome, welcome. And, uh, oh, did you see that? Oh, what you did missed you do? It. What'd you do? <laughs> Oh, this guy. Bring out some crazy donkey I learned that from my friend Bruno. Shout out. Shout out to Bruno. So, anyway, so we were talking uh, at the end of last segment about how a lot of people who are either just starting out or really they don't have an ego and they just want to ask honest questions. Because there are a lot of questions in this business that some of us know. I mean, there's plenty of stuff I don't know. Plenty of stuff you don't know. Yeah, I mean, I have... I have questions all the time. You know, so I know that you so. had pulled up a couple of interesting questions. Yeah, we have, have a asked couple. on Facebook throughout the different um, groups that we are we're members of because yeah. honestly Facebook has become as much as MySpace was better, Facebook has been so pivotal in different groups that you can I think join. it's better for like a community type use. Yeah, and I mean there are so many you, it doesn't matter what you do. Like if you want to crochet if you want to be a I'm DJ, sure there's a group for crochet. There is one. I will look it up in the break. I tell you that right now. But there are break, there are different groups for everything. Underwater You're, basket weaving. Yeah, like, dude, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a group of, like, four o- The Office groups. And we just oh, share yeah. funny memes yeah. and just, like, every day the someone's like, memes. I need to get a new license plate. What's a really good, you know, name for one? So this is very more, much more important than that. But so let's uh, let's get our first question. Sure. Let's start with the first one. Who's it from? Uh, this is from the, uh, the DJ Idea sharing group okay uh from colton rifle colton i want to thank you for your service yes thank you i don't know if you watch the podcast but please do um how do you guys get older music 50s 60s and 70s okay that's a good question i definitely know why he's asking that um if you're a member of like a record pool or an mp3 pool it's not easy to find older music no it's really not so where do you find your stuff i mean you know so i've been doing this now yeah, it's, almost it's almost 10 years it's almost 10 years a little short of 10 years but uh the, honestly the best way has been over the years just working with other djs and sharing within you know each other you know different that's what some i was people have say. you know great you know they have an awesome 50s folder you know they have an awesome you know 60s folder you know then but i mean honestly i've also just over the years just somehow i've found music or i've bought music i've gotten some really great premixes but there's also i know the music for sure you know what I mean? I know, and I also like a lot of the music. So, like, I have the Stones discography. I have, you know, a lot of that type of music, a lot of the classic rock I already owned to begin with, but you have to have that type of music. And it doesn't matter what event you're at, because it doesn't matter if you're at a communion, a block party, you know, you're going to have, you know, Uncle Ray's going to come up with a Corona in his Uncle head, Ray. and he's going to start asking for Def Leppard. You know what I mean? It's going to happen. Yeah. And you got to know the music. You know, it's not even so much... It, it's just as important to have the music as to know the music. Absolutely. It, it really is. If you get a, a request and you've never heard the song, you know, you kind of need to know how to mix it in. Yeah, I mean, of course, so. you can cue it up, but you need to have it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, yeah, you need course. to have the song. I mean, a big thing that has worked for me it, when I don't have specific music is to go to Spotify. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you love Spotify. They, they have the playlists from like the 50s, 60s, mm-hmm. and you go to the playlist. The, but what's awesome is they have so many different ones. They have 80s rock, mm-hmm. 80s pop, 80s this, 80s top 40. Yeah. You know, so if you're at a wedding and you're like, okay, I got to do some 60s, but they're not feeling what you have. Right. You can always look. So now, how do you do it now? Because I don't, I don't use Serato. I really just use, you know. So you, you use Serato and then with Spotify and you mix them together and then you no. mix out. No, I, oh, okay. I, I don't believe you can do that just yet. Okay. Um, I know Spotify works with the DJ app okay. on iOS devices, so you could actually mix live with Spotify, but. The way I have to do it is I bring Spotify in on my phone or on my laptop through RCA to 8th jack. And um, what's cool is it's on a separate channel, so I can listen to it on the queue and then just kind of bring it in. I like it. I mean, it's definitely an awesome way if you don't have, you know, songs or if you need Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to use it less and less. What I actually do is every time I have to use it or I'm forced to use it Mm -hmm. because I don't have a certain song, when I go home, I make a point of it to download that song and more songs by that artist just to expand the music library. Because I know a lot of people talk smack about using Spotify. Talking smack. Which, yeah, as a DJ, you should have a diverse library. Sure. But you know, you're not gonna have every song all the time. You have to build. 
Perfect example was so, what three weeks ago I threw you at a Haitian party. I look use, at this face. I use Spotify a lot for that. Show this face. He's not Haitian. Okay, he's not going to know all the music. I don't know all the music. So, yeah. you know, you had most of the music because they sent you know, me, the client. I think they sent me like a couple songs. It was like 14 songs. Yeah. So I looked at more things from that artist and those artists. But and you used I all your resources to, together. Yeah. And I, that's how you got through it. And they had a good time. I went on YouTube. I looked up Haitian, Haitian Party. And yeah. It was like shazamming the, the songs that I heard and then of course I went to Spotify and you know it was a big help right and a couple people would request things and I had them like type it in on my phone because I didn't go. know how to spell and it and you could find it and yeah yeah it's just a great way to operate and to make the client happy another great way is there's always people selling hard drives whether it's on Craigslist or Facebook and they're selling two terabyte hard drives 500 gig hard drives full of music already in order yes that Uh-oh. that is illegal. <laughs> if they bought it, it's not illegal. Uh, if they purchased all the music, it's not illegal. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. And we're gonna hope they did. Distributing music like that is illegal, just so you guys know. But if they purchased it, if they purchased it, it's not illegal. Then there's nothing wrong. Right. So kudos to you guys for following the law. <laughs> awesome job. Just just looking out for you guys. Looking out for the viewers. You know. Looking out for yourself and me. Because yeah. we're on TV talking about it. <laughs> So we we right, can't though. get sued now, now that right. we have this exactly. awesome show. Exactly. So. so, but bottom line, just do your research, you know, pick up the music from either, you know, iTunes, buy the albums, or, you know, talk to your fellow DJs that you become friends with. Be really nice to them. Help them load in yeah. and be like, hey, real quick, can I borrow some music from you? Yeah. And, you know, there are so many mixes that I have, like dinner pre-mixes, that I just find out so many of my friends have because we've just, over the years, we have just all shared music. Yeah. You know, I had this folder. Oh, really, I needed an awesome 50s set. You know, we all have, like, this uh, the Italian dinner premix. And, like, everyone has it. I've given it to you. Other people have I given mean, it to me. I mean, me specifically as a DJ, I always play That's Amore. Always. During dinner. It's, like, my favorite song to play. Everyone reacts so well to it. We used to, I used to it's always so play funny. it. Uh, even when I worked with another company back in the day, it always used to be when we did pasta. That was the first song we'd open up with, was that tomorrow. But I'm finding more and more people, less and less, are doing pasta. And they're just doing, like, a dual um, appetizer. I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but it's, like, significantly more. I mean, from what I notice, usually it's the salad. Yeah. The pasta. Usually, yes. And dinner. But I've got to say, in the last year and a half to two years of doing weddings, they're starting out with the appetizer already on the table. And they're actually cutting out pasta. Right. Which I find very interesting. I mean, you're still going to have your really traditional Italian weddings that are going to have the pasta. Right, but well, a lot of them... I love talking about food, but <laughs> we're running low on time. So. Right, I don't know, man. I think we're good. Wow, we so, actually talked a lot. Let's start this next question. This is from Umang Patel. Okay. I guess that's how you would pronounce that, right? I'm going to say yes. From the DJ Idea Sharing group again. Uh, you just get home from DJing a wedding. When do you send your post-event follow-up? And what does it include? Okay, well, I'm not going to send it that night because no one's looking at it. You know, it, it, just say, it says wedding. So, yeah, I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to send it that night. Yeah, it's sort of just common sense that they're probably going to do their honeymoon either the next day or... I mean, it also depends. Like in the movies, they always go right to their honeymoon but right, you also need, right yeah, after exactly. the, <laughs> the wedding. Yeah, exactly. Less but, and less people are doing that right yeah. away. But also you have to realize, you know, it depends also what's included in that. If we're doing zap shot photography... We like to give that to the you give that to them right after. So they're not getting it that night. We might send it if it's a you know if it's a Saturday you know wedding. I would typically send it Monday. I would send it you know hello thanks so much for having us. Here's the link to your pictures by the way. Make sure you leave us a review. Yada yada yada. That's what I would normally do. But I normally wouldn't send it right after because hey they're not gonna look. They're tired. They're exhausted. They just had a wedding. If I had to put a time on it, I'd say three to five days. Maybe. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's it. If, they, if you know Just so it, if they're on their honeymoon, right. they can look at it when they get back, but you're also not setting it that night or the next day. And if the, the you know in day, advance you know? they're leaving that night and they're going to be gone for two weeks, you can send it, but they might not see it. You know what I mean? I would yeah, only send I mean, it specifically I if, just don't know how I feel about sending it the same night. I, mean, I don't I don't think... I, I vote no. No. That's what I vote. <laughs> that's I vote a no, no for me, too. <laughs> I, vote, I vote a no. I say, you know, wait a couple days depending on, you know, the urgency of what's included in that. But chill out a little bit. Let them enjoy yeah, you know, let the remnants them, of their wedding. Let them enjoy their newlywed 
Ish. Wedness. Wedness. <laughs> Next question. All right. We got one more question. This is from Christopher A. London on the DJ Idea Sharing app. Uh, DJs, you have $2,000 to spend. What are you buying to make your business better? All right. So, like, that's pretty vague. Are we talking right. about, like, with 2000 from I mean, scratch? We started with nothing? The way he worded it, to make your business better... Let's assume that he's talking about the business in a whole. So we're not, so like not, as of now. not necessarily the equipment. Okay. Maybe the equipment. But Well, I mean I could definitely say the equipment. It, but it depends where you're at. So we're just gonna take it from this start point. So it doesn't you're not starting from scratch. Right. Because you can't start from as a good DJ, you can't start from scratch with two grand. Yeah. I mean, you can, but then we're gonna you know, we don't wanna talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you got two thousand bucks. What do you at this moment? From where I, I know am. what you need, so I already, I already, actually, we're gonna answer for each other. I just, I made that a new thing. Okay, we're answer for each other. All right, let's answer for you each other. You need a MacBook. You need a new computer. I mean, I have one. It's you just, just said before the show you need a new computer. Well, it's a 2008. You know how many years ago that was? And Eleven. It works great. It was. Where's your backup? I don't have a backup. Exactly. 2008. Hello, new backup. You need a new computer. My baby. <laughs> at, at any given time, we're at these big events. How many MacBooks I got? Three. <laughs> three. I always bring three. Why? One's usually well, I mean, they're used photos. for different things, but... You know, one's running lighting, and then I have the backup, but they all can do the music as well. Yeah. It's so important. We've, we've done a... I think we did at least one show, maybe one and a half on backup equipment. I mean, there's nothing more important than your computer. I mean, that's, you know, the hub of your music. It's the control panel. It's the control panel. Yeah. So, I think you need a new computer. Okay, what else? I don't, know, that's a lot. I don't know. This thing was like almost two grand for mine, souped up. So all right. So what if all right, you have a little bit left? What if I'm it wasn't cool cover? What if it if it wasn't the the laptop? What if you were talking about my business in general? Mm, your business. Well, in what general? do you think I should do to push my business? I definitely a little wouldn't better? suggest advertising. Your money goes too quick. I don't really think it's a necessary thing. Um, definitely like some some pamphlet style stuff. You know, maybe some folders. You know, stuff, you know, show, showing off your brand to people that you already work with who can give out, you know, that type of credentials of yours and get people to know you that way. So that's what I would say. I would say, you know, stuff like that, different flyers, postcards, you know, that could all, all be good things for you to have. Okay. Maybe some new equipment if you wanted it. You know, maybe yeah. some trussing. Maybe some I mean, heads. me personally, I think I need new speakers. So new speakers, um, I have, There you go. We'll I, get you the k 12 points. Right now I have the EV ZLX. 12 p's and they're great they sound great they're clear they just don't go loud enough well we're gonna fix that i need more you a brand new set of sneakers <laughs> <laughs> what about me um i mean you pretty much don't, I, have, knew it. I knew you were gonna say that i i mean maybe it's because no, I'm pretty i don't sure have I as, everything I'm pretty i don't sure I have everything. as much as you have so looking from the outside in i'm like he's got everything he needs already you would think so but, but every day it's something new i gotta freaking go out and um, find and buy Honestly, if you gave me two grand today, what do we need? Two grand today. I definitely need to get some custom cases made for different equipment that I've been looking at. You have a lot of cases. Well, I need more. <laughs> I need more cases. All right, we're not done with cases yet. Um, I just bought a couple new inflatables, so we don't need those at the moment. I don't know. I mean, from working with you, I would say maybe making the cases for the cocktail tables and things like that a little more portable. You mean like these? Yeah, like flight cases. Not these themselves, but like the acrylic ones that you stand on. Yeah, that's what I was Those talking are about. heavy like as heck. Cases. That's right. That's so. really when I said custom cases, I'm talking about the Lumo stage okay. custom acrylic tops. Okay. So I'll get working on that. You get some new computers. <laughs> you get some new speakers. Sounds good. We're here at the Q Points Podcast. What do you need? Let us know. We're going to help you get $2,000. Yeah, Not drop really. a comment. Drop a comment. Drop a comment. What, what would you do with $2,000? I like that. I like that what, question. What would you do? I don't know. I might buy more equipment. That's what I do. <laughs> or maybe I'll pay All myself. Right. Put in my four old quick game. Who knows? Few Points Podcast. We'll be back. We'll be right, right after back. this.
Points Podcast. <laughs> We're back. We didn't show the lights. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Especially for this segment. What is up? Welcome back to the Q Points Mobile DJ Podcast, episode 14. 14. It is Wednesday. What is it? The 20th? 19th. 19th. Just kidding. And um, <laughs> we're going to be showing off Anthony's one we of the, have your favorite the tools. One and only Chave Gig Bar. This is actually and the only this one. This model is the two. This is the only one because apparently you said the only one. So this is it. This is the only one in the world. This okay. is it. Okay. <laughs> this is the only one, man. Why do you pick apart my words? <laughs> I have to, or else it wouldn't be fun. All right, no. So, yeah, this is the Gig Bar 2. Uh, the model before this is the Gig Bar IRC. Mm-hmm. It, dude, I, I mean, it's, it, look at what it's doing right now. I mean, it, it's doing a lot, and I'm not even hitting anything. It's, on, just... it's on auto. This is what happens when you first turn the light on. I'm going to just play with you, it and see what happens. When you first plug it in, this is what it automatically goes to. Um let me see the hey, you play with it. You know so what to do. This is the remote. Um, this is very common for all Chave DJ lights. Mm-hmm. So if you have any Chave lights, you've seen this remote before. This is the IRC. It also comes with the foot pedal, which I don't use. But I talk personally about it because it's use. actually pretty sick what, what, um, what it can do. Whenever someone is trying to sell this to you, they always try to push this, the foot pedal, but I don't like using it. You might. I don't know. So it's, it's a 12-volt exactly battery on the back. And uh, the on switch is right here. And basically, you just use your feet to... You could do the blackout, which is what shuts the bar off. Right. Uh, you could change the, the, the color here. Uh, you can make it sound active here by hitting the music pedal. Or auto, which is what it's doing now. I like the fact that you could put that under you, though, when you're DJing. So well, you don't have to well, worry about doing, you know, what I'm That's the idea behind here. it. I, I do like it. And it's got the antenna that pops out. If you're doing a one-man, you know, Sweet 16 or something like that, you need to black the lights out. The antenna pops out. Boom. You could black the lights out just by hitting your foot. Well, that's the idea behind it. I personally don't like it because you can't control as much as you can with the remote. Can you use both this at has, the same time? This has a fade. This has strobe. This has... You know how fast the strobe goes. Can you can you can use both though, or sure. is it one or the other? Yeah, no, you can use both. So you could technically hook that up under you just for blackout and that purposes, but keep this right next to you. Yeah, you should try that. I haven't tried that. You're gonna try, it and we're gonna show it next week. Okay. There you go. All right. We also have in in, in yeah, great so fashion because we did this last week. Before we bring this out, I just want to mention how how portable this really is. It's not big I mean, at all. Honestly, it looks big. It's not big. It's not. It, yeah, it's it, it, it it's perfect. It's really not. That's the carrying case that Will's holding right now. What I like about this case, though, is the fact that just like the H ones we showed, it has the built-in. It's all cut out. Yeah, it all has. It, it has the nice cutout. So literally, you don't have to take the lights off of the bar. I think the only thing you do have to do is you, you just, just have fold, to line them up. You fold this up, right? Or you well, fold it down. Down. Actually. Yeah. There you go. You fold these down. And you make sure that the par cans are are flat, facing forward, and it fits right into the case. You don't have to take anything off. You pull it out, and this is what it looks like. I mean, if you think so. about it, if you were to do a full light show, you know, you're talking about how many IRCs right now that are all have to be plugged in separately. You know, you got your laser up top. There's a lot going on. So this saves. I'm gonna say this probably saves about 15 minutes worth of. Let me turn that down a little bit so it's not flashing the no, camera. It's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna say this probably saves about 15 minutes of setup yeah. at least. You know. Less than that. Yeah. Less than that. Because the tripod actually comes with it. It has its own bag. Cool. So you set the tripod up. You take the light out of the case. And you plop it on, on the tripod. You plug it in. Less than five minutes. Well, I was saying it would save time versus the other way of having to plug everything in manual. 100%. This is going to save a massive amount of time. If you had to plug each and every one of these lights saying, in, like 15 and then minutes, if you wanted to DMX them, right. you know, it's Easy. just, it, it would, it would you're really saving an immense of amount of time. And you were also saying earlier that we could take this gig bar and actually put it right on the sub pole. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've done in the past. Um, that must look pretty cool, actually. Yeah. So what's cool about this is being on the tripod, you can have it behind you, mm-hmm. which is ideally what you'd like to do so you don't see the tripod. Um, you could keep it in front of you, maybe behind the facade, but right in front of you. Um, and you can actually put the tripod, like the bar that it sits on, into the speaker mount on a subwoofer. So say if you have your speakers somewhere else on tripods and you have the two subwoofers next to your setup, you could plop the lights right in there. Um, I actually have two gig bars. I usually only use one at once. but I Dude, I, I really think it's, it's, it's a pretty cool... And now you can DMX these together with another bar. So your other bar, can you hook these together? Yeah, on the back. On the back, it's got, yeah. So on yeah. the back, you have DMX out and DMX in. 
and then you also have your IR whole channel here so if you didn't have the remote you could definitely work out of it other cool thing it has is it has a power out so you can hook up another light or something yes, into I, this I did want to mention that, um, that is really cool. I also own the Easy Gobo so what I usually do is that has a magnet on it so I stick the magnet onto the top or right here in between the par and then I plug it right in into the back of the bar because it has a power mm -hmm. out there you go. You know what would also be really cool? The H1s. Yeah. Because they, they're magnetic. You could put them you could put on them top right you could and you four. could pin spot certain parts right. of the room with them. Yeah. Look at all these good ideas sure. we're coming up with. That's what I'm saying though. This is the most versatile light out there that, in my opinion. And uh, do you know the suggested, you know the red sale price on this? Not off the top of my head. Let me look We're going to have to get that off because I mean honestly, I really think, especially for one man DJs, this is a great unit. It's going to solve all your issues. It's going to, and honestly, it does more lighting than a lot of DJs would probably do without it. And it's doing it all at once. The laser's really cool up top. I just, I kind of want to buy one. I think the last time I bought one was for you. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> one day you needed it. I know I you're. just like, hey, let me just pick it up for you. I mean, look at this video right I know you're more. And this is only two of them. This thing is sick. You're more into like the intricate lighting designs with moving heads yeah, and I'm up lights. Yeah, definitely moving heads, but this is a totally different factor. I mean, you could still use this along with the moving the heads. The thing I love most about this is just how easy it is. Right. Retail, it's going for $479.99. Okay. Um, you could get the older models for in the 300s, and they also sell them as a package. You could get two at once. Okay, that, that's pretty cool. That looks like it's going for $899. All right, that's not bad. And this is obviously something, again, it's got a lot of different components. So you'd probably want to demo it. You know, our friends down the block at IDJ Now in Babylon and in Queens, they have it on display. Yeah, that's I where mean, I got we this actually, one. We actually played around with it there one time. So I would definitely suggest when it comes to a lighting bar like this, this might be something you definitely want to play around with a little bit before you purchase it. Not so much that you don't know if you're going to like it, but more so, so you're comfortable with it before you go out on your first gig. Right. You know, this, and I, what's cool about this model specifically, the Gig Bar Two, is it has UV black lights. I really like the fact that it has that's, black lights. That's honestly and truthfully the reason why we got the two. Yeah. Why yeah, we, we you picked use, it up yep. for me? Because we were doing an event mm -hmm. at the Isle of Kickboxing, yep. and it was black light night, and I have no black light lights at all. Right. So you pick this up, you put it on auto, you hit number one, so the pars are on, and you just hit UV, and there you go. I like how that works. U yeah. UV black light. And what's cool is these up here on the bar itself are actually strobe lights. Yeah, that, that, that's really cool. And I like how it had like Let me see if I could get those on. We're going to auto. Strobes. Dude, it's just like, I love how like, <laughs> no, but it, it's cool though how every single one goes individually and it almost makes like its own lighting program. We're having a little bit of interference in. with the other light <laughs> behind and us. that's what we're talking about. Now that's strobing. Look at that. Hey, you see, you were talking about the fact that these IR remotes are Yeah, no, they're all the same. Lights. Yeah. Hello? That's literally what it is. All right, well, you saw when we had it on auto before. You want the, the strobe? Go in the store the, and play with it. The strobes are going. Uh, what's cool about the Gig Bar 2 is that the strobe also does UV. So it does. There you go. <laughs> How did you do that? I don't know, man. It's <laughs> he, just some buttons. He, he has the magic touch today. Apparently. So see here? It's the UV on the strobe That's really and, cool. and the pars, not just the pars. And it, Now, how big of a room would you say that this would be good for? I mean, I've used this in massive settings in so you would say school gyms. Over a hundred people, easy. You could do it with over a hundred people. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Probably about two hundred. You probably want two of these, right? Probably one on each side of the room. Yes, or something like absolutely. That. I mean, yeah. they're very and affordable for the amount of lights they come up with. Up top here, this is a laser. Uh, if you want to hit auto. Oh, what's going on? Hitting auto. <laughs> Hitting auto. Is it on? I think it's on. No. You have to hit. Auto and then oh, uh, it's going. Yeah, there it is. Very so cool. it has the red and green lasers, and it makes little cool designs with them. And then again, you're about to do your sweet sixteen ceremony. You're about to do your first dance. Boom, done. Shut them off. You're yeah. out of the way, and you're not worried about you know getting a photographer's way because that's a big thing. Is that when you're not DMXing lights, or you're and you don't have full control, and you're just plugging in an IRC, and you're just letting it go. You literally, if you're well, about to do something yeah. last minute, you have to go and unplug your lights. Are you Any reviews that I've seen about the gig bar, everybody just says they hate the, that most DJs just have it on auto. 
because most DJs will hook it up, hit the auto button, and leave, leave it like that for the whole night. Mm, yeah. Photographers hate that because right. when they're taking pictures, the red and green dots are on them. Right. So when you're having, say it's at a wedding or a Sweet 16, it's the father-daughter dance or the first dance, shut the lasers off. Yeah. But that's what's cool about... I typically shut all the lights off, to be honest. Unless it's like a white spotlight that we're right. doing with the moving right. heads. That that's what I doing. usually do with the pars. I, I set the pars up to white, mm -hmm. and I aim them in the center of the dance floor. So they also have white in these, too, which yeah. is very cool. Yep. You have red, white, blue, green. Uh, all the colors! It's orange. There's an A on it. <laughs> Amber. Oh, amber. The, is it orange? Is it yeah. A, yeah, that's amber. Okay, yeah, so, so amber basically. Amber is like an orangey. But for people that don't know, really, what amber does is it's not only its own color, but it also makes all the other colors more vibrant. Okay. So you're gonna when you have so that's why they call the lights R G B A U V now. When you're adding that amber color in it, you're making your reds redder. Oh, blue, see, I didn't bluer. know that. These are the type of thing, and your whites whiter. That's what the amber does. It's almost like that extra pigment that you want to have that's gonna make the lights just shine. Better. Like, if you, we'll have to compare it one day, but I'll show you, like, what an older uplight would look like compared to, you know, like these ones that are, that do have amber in them. They're just so much more it comes of a out vibrant more color. Vibrant. Yeah. Okay. And they're more powerful and it, and it helps in so many different ways. So, amber is, UV is important, you know, if you want, if you're doing black light parties and everything, but amber is just in itself huge. And like we were talking about the H1s last week, the H1s Not to mention, also have it's that. just a beautiful color. You know, it's a, it's a great, amber is a great color to use on uh, wood. You know, when we're at the Riviera in Massapequa, it looks awesome. You know, we light the whole room in amber. Is that like a very... It's a dark wood area. Rustic room. It's a very rustic looking okay. room. So the amber really kind of brings out a little bit of the shine in it. And it's not overpowering. Because with wood, you have to be careful what colors will look good on it and what colors won't. I mean, in retrospect, I mean, for the most part, blues will always look nice. You know, reds kind of sometimes. But amber just on wood just looks... It's just a really nice, almost like a... a um, just almost like a, a, a candlelight, uh, if, if that's a good way to put it. So, Makes I mean, sense. I'm not gonna, you know, if I'm gonna buy something that I need a versatile light for a one man, this would be what I would choose. So I sold you on it. Y yeah. <laughs> so don't worry. Yay! Next week, when you get your paycheck, I'm just gonna put it towards my gig bar. Oh. <laughs> but no, dude, I mean, yeah, no, these things really are awesome, cool. man. Uh, like I said, you guys can get it. What's the price again? It's eight ninety nine for two of them. Yeah, uh, four seventy nine ninety nine is the retail price for. Okay. Think bar two. Dude, it's a very fair price. Uh, let them know you came from Q Points. Maybe they'll work out a little deal with you. Maybe they'll give you a little discount to Rooney. Who knows? If not, you know? tell them they need to be working with Q Points because we're the Mobile DJ <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> you damn straight we are. You are absolutely right. So the Gig Bar two guys. You know, I mean, I, I guess to wrap all this up. What I want you guys to know about it is how portable it is, yep. how easy it is. It's designed for one-man events, so when yep. it's just you setting everything up, this is a lifesaver. It's a lifesaver. It's quick. It's easy. It's painless. You can go pretty high on it depending on your tripod. The tripod that comes with it seems to go pretty high. You know, we have it set quite low right now. Yeah, I think it goes up it to 10 head. feet high. That's huge. Yeah. So you, you can definitely do a lot of different things with it, and I'm, I'm going to give it an 8. 8 out of 10? 8 out of 10. What about you? All right. Uh, you can't give it a 10 and a 10. Because I love it so much, I'll probably give it a 8.5 or a 9. An 8.5 Just or because a nine. most events I'm doing on my own. So, I mean, I can't imagine having to do one of Will's extravagant setups with the, with the by myself. Fives, all the by myself. Stuff. So, so, I mean, this this is a lifesaver when you're doing week, things by the yourself. The gig bar too, and I think you guys should pick one up. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, if you could find a use for it, we highly recommend it. So coming up, who do we have on the on the podcast? DJ next Joe segment. Bun. So if you haven't heard of Joe Bun, tell him who it is. He is the creator of the DJ's Vault. He also owns and DJs at Bun DJ Co. Based out of North Carolina. Very cool. I'm looking forward to having him on. Going to be a very special guest coming up in the f next and final segment of the show, the Q Points Mobile DJ Podcast here every single Wednesday at noon. We'll catch you guys in just a few minutes. Hey 
Hey everybody, it's Jeff Short with Chauvet DJ, and I'm here with my friend DJ Brent, Brent Schmidt of B Productions from Cleveland. Brent, how are you? I'm doing great today, Jeff. How are you? Good. Well, we're here today to talk about the brand new Intimidator Spot 475Z. This thing is a beast. It's bright. It's powerful. And Brent, you've had a chance to play around with it a little bit. What are your Absolutely. first impressions? First off, 250 watt LED inside of this fixture is fantastic. It is super bright, dual rotating prisms. And another thing I like about this fixture is the dual gobo wheels. You know, in our theater application, we are able to overlap two gobos on stage. So if we're doing something either to paint the backdrop of, uh, you know, on stage or on the floor of the stage, we're able to use both the dual wheels. The other great thing about this product is the Z in the product name, which stands for Zoom. Motorized Zoom, what are your thoughts about that? Well, through DMX, you're able to go from a grand entrance look, and then all of a sudden, if you need to change looks to the cake, that motorized zoom comes in very handy to go from a wide shot to a very tight beam. So it gives you that flexibility and versatility automatically or through DMX control to change that zoom projection Absolutely. for shorter long throw applications. Yep. Brent, once again, thank you for being here. We appreciate you taking the time to check out the Intimidator Spot 475Z. Final thoughts? It's bright, it's powerful, it's robust, it's perfect for us. Thank you, Matt. Absolutely. And thank you for watching. Jeff Short with Chauvet DJ. We'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome back. back to Q Points, the mobile DJ podcast. Ooh, that could be a song. You're going to record it. Beautiful. I'm pretty awesome. sure no one wants to hear that every Ooh, every Wednesday. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. So who do we have coming on we right have now? special guest, DJ Joe Bunn, creator of the DJ's Vault. Joe. How Yo. are you, my friend? I'm great. How are you guys doing? We're awesome. We're doing very great. excited to have you here. Man, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much I'm for coming on. Uh, gaming head. Uh, there you yeah, go. no, it looks great. It sounds great. So <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> All right, so you're based out of North Carolina, correct? Correct, correct. Raleigh, okay. North Carolina is cool. where my home is. Cool. And we saw on your website you have, what, one, two, three, four, five different locations all across the U.S.? Yep, correct. Uh, so... I've been able to basically license out my office uh, to some guys that used to work for me in the past that wanted to take their career to the next level. So they said, I want to be an owner, I want to just a DJ company, and so worked out agreements, and now they've got uh, offices in Charlotte, North Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, Richmond, Virginia, and San Diego. That, that's incredible. That's amazing. So, how did this all start? How did you uh, how you get into the business, and how did you come up with this idea to uh, start licensing your ideas and really sharing your experiences with other DJs? Yeah, I mean, I've been in this thirty some years now. Uh, I started it when I was thirteen, fourteen years old. School dances, you know, did my prom, went to Carolina, did all the frat parties, bars, nightclubs. Um, left college, started this mail order company that went horribly wrong, so went back to DJing. Um, and then I've been in Raleigh for probably 20 years now, and that's when I started hiring other DJs and going you know, into the multi-op route. Very and so I guess after doing it for many years, uh, this guy, David Fox, that had been working for me, approached me and said, hey, man, you know, I've just passed the bar exam, went to law school, but I decided I don't want to be a lawyer. And I was like, oh, that's not good. I was like, I want to do what you do. It's a lot of money. I had this town. <laughs> right. And uh, he said, where would you go? I said, I'd go to Charleston, South Carolina, which is my favorite city. It's probably in the country, but it's also, I think, for the number two destination wedding location in the United States. So he right. was young. 30 and not married, so he picked up and moved down there. He's been killing it ever since. And it just kind of was a trickle of other DJs, you know, coming to me and saying they want to take moves. And that's how it all took off. Now, at any time through that process, did you feel um, uncomfortable or uneasy? Because um, it's your brand. Having people on the represent line. your yeah. name or. 
you know, was it just sort of an easy I mean, process for you? And even more stupidly, it's named Bun DJ Company. It's not like it's, you know, like... Uh, from your name, that's it. Yeah. It's, it. It's all you. Yeah, so I, I think that why it is because they all hear and knew the people I was would hire, they, how I would mark them, they knew how I would book shows. They just knew the system. And so I had had that oh crap moment where I released my brand to somebody that was ready for it. You know, if if DJ Ricky down in Atlanta all of a sudden pinged me and said he wanted a fun DJ company office down there, you know, I think it might be a little more difficult for me to release the rank. Gotcha. Right. right. Okay. So very it, cool. No, it's very because I mean I don't really know any other DJ yeah. companies that are you know I, mean, I know some that are tri-state but not I mean not nationwide. I mean yeah, that's I a mean, really as, big thing. As the owner of a DJ company myself, right? I've always dreamt of like having it be a multi-op but like spread on a large scale, right? Which is exactly what you're doing. So I mean, no, that, it's that very is, admirable. That is huge. And so you were so busy with this and having all the you know multi-state and all this. When did you have time to start the DJ's vault? And what and what exactly is it? If you were to describe it, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it, it. We launched it on February 20th of this year, but I feel like I cooking it for a couple of years. I had been making long form DVDs, selling them, like all the DJ conferences that I spoke at. Okay. So I had done marketing music, um, let's see, selling the music, and then hiring the music. Uh, and they're exactly what they sound like. And they were around an hour each, and I was selling those, and just first, the very first iteration was on a DVD, and then I realized nobody had a DVD and it went to a thumb drive, and then I realized nobody had a thumb drive on their yeah. books anymore. And I was like, man, this needs to be like on demand. And I've got so many articles I've written and so many videos I want to make um, that were just scattered all over the place. And I said, you know, we need to coordinate all this stuff and put it on site. And, and and that's that's how it started. I, I hired a company. They started the website. About a week later, I had this call just like this. I was on a, 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 sh a show with another DJ. He said, will you come on and talk about uh, His name is Dominic Perron. And at the end of it, he said, I, you know, I, I know about the ball because uh, I had pitched at the end of the show. And he said, I can show you things. And we set up a call that Monday that I almost blew off. And it would have been one of the biggest things in my career if I had because 10 minutes into that call I realized he was the guy that needed to build the site and help me with it and we launched it and you know, we're about to hit a thousand and that's 800 more than I thought we'd get you yeah. know the truth that's phenomenal I mean yeah, in I today's mean, day and age so many things are going subscription based whether we're talking yeah. about Adobe or you know subscription based you know monthly you know yeah, even boxes the, coming to you, and this even is no the MP3 different. pools. Yeah, yeah, MP3 like pools. Everything is subscription based, and this is something that can take your DJ business and just, you know, it it literally right. takes you to the next level. I, I you so, know, I, I always I mean, say, and I don't know if you'd agree with me or not, Joe, but I always say there are people who are DJs and there are people who are businessmen, and to find that middle ground, you know, it takes time, it takes oh. effort, and it takes you know listening and understanding. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really like, think that's so it, important. I think that what, if I had to sum it up, it, it's a membership, an online membership community for really mobile DJs that are take their business to the next level. Right. And you know, we do that yesterday. I found that it's a ton of single operator guys that are this part time, kind of miserable in their day jobs, and want to be. Uh, not, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to say they want to be me, but they want to be a multi-op DJ company owner. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now and make a living and support. Their yeah, I mean. So there's... inside, you have got all these articles and webinars and short videos and long video that are all of these thirty plus years of knowledge that are up here, 
now put out there for everybody else because I just want everybody to be better. Right. I, I want their marketing to be better. I want their gear to look better. I want them to be able to get in and get out faster. I want them to be able to spend time with their families and take time off and not have to work every weekend to make ends meet. Like I want, I want it all for everybody. I love that's that. that's the next thing that I was going to ask you actually is uh, there's so much buzz about the DJ's vault right now. Right. A lot of good things, mm -hmm. but the the bad things that I've seen is that it's all experienced DJs that are like have been in the business for 30, 40 years, and they're all like blown away that you would give out these secrets and like this is <laughs> and they all say like you you've literally put everything that you've done out there. So, I mean, it's out there, man. I mean, some people take it super literally. <laughs> I've seen a lot of knockoffs of my logos and videos that I've made, oh, but not there, you know, they're not in my market. I think the only people mad about it are that are in their market. And now this kid that had no, you know, no branding, no knowledge, you know, a, a rickety looking sound system trying to step his game up. Right. right? That just needs to mean it means you need to be better. You know, yeah. I've never exactly. You competition breeds better competition with the right training, and I think that that's sure. so important because at the end of the day, if you made me better, I'm gonna try to make you better. And at the end of the day, no matter what, the client is always gonna get a better product, and that's kind of what the whole yeah, thing we're here for. Because you know what, business, when you have yeah. a better product, you can charge more money, and then everyone Absolutely. has an overall better experience. So, Joe, really I mean, quick, I, I have a question for you. What is the what is the biggest problem that when Pete, you see in people's companies when they come to the DJ's vault and they join? What's what's the biggest thing you have to critique right off the bat? Branding. Branding. Websites. Yeah. Business cards. You know, because that's the the first line of defense or offense. In this mm -hmm. case, you know, if I hand you my business card at the end of a gig, no matter how good I was, and it looks crappy. Or even if the car looks okay, that customer is eventually going to go to your website. And I call websites a money portal. I still believe in the power of a website. And if they go to your website and it doesn't look good, you just lost. You're right. You just lost, quite frankly. It's it's I've seen so many bad websites, bad art, bad logos. Um, that I started and there's a section in there where every month I do this logo review and I ask people, I'm like I'm going to be brutally honest, but if you want me to review your logo on video, send it in. And I've helped a lot of people. You know, I'm not super brutal about it, but I'm just like, this isn't good enough. That That's one of my main things I say to people sometimes. This isn't good enough. They'll show me, you know, their wedding show set up and I'll go, this isn't good enough. Their business card is just the standard shape, no rounded corners. They got it done at Kinko and I'll say, this isn't good enough. Right. And I think people appreciate that, yeah, honestly, I mean, because I'm if, just trying yeah, to help. If you're going to be Some in a people business just like need this, that, you need to they, be able to take the criticism. They need that criticism. You need and, to. You know. I mean, you've taken criticism. If, I've taken criticism. If you don't, sure. you will never I've get taken, better. Yep. I've taken criticism. I still, you know, I'm still open for feedback and things. It, it, I'm not I'm not perfect. None of us are. Right. Um, you know, that they, everybody can make improvements. I mean, I'm leaving from this hall to go to arm dj's conference in tennessee to try oh, wow. and learn something i'm not even speaking i'm driving five hours to go learn something and i've been doing this for 33 years you can always learn more and you just have to be open to doing it especially people that have been in, in business 30 years a lot has changed since 1990 it's true. Uh, uh, yeah, so much i mean crazy. everything actually everything's changed i don't think there's anything but, that's still it, the same no no technology phone but I have Music. seen, and I'm oh. sure you have as well. I've seen so many companies that have died out because of the fact that they're not willing to adapt. That's the problem. That is the problem. That the company that they're still holding that same 1990 website. Yeah, that's you know, not mobile it's friendly. It's not even responsive. It's not even yep. mobile. Like, what are we doing here? Hit the nail on the dot. So, so Joe, where can we find everything about you? Where can we? What's the yep. DJ's vault? All that's fun stuff. Sure. Sure. So, uh, my website is Bunt, B U N N, djcompany.com. If you want to just take a look at our, you know, company site. And then the DJ's Vault is www.thedjsvault.com. Um, you know, we'd love to have you take a look around, watch some of the videos there, sign up. Uh, yeah, I'm know, a member. A lot of I mean, signed up. 
yeah. yearly. And yeah. yeah, if you want to sign up for monthly. Right. That- and tell me what you've thought, because I know you just joined recently. Yeah, I joined recently. I was looking around. I love all the documents that you share. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I love that because, you know, when I'm making the contracts or um, the things that I send out to the clients, you know, I, it takes a lot to really know how to word it. Mm-hmm. And you helped a lot. It does. I mean, the essential docs, it, it, it's just incredible. No, good, I really, I really think what you're doing is good because overall, I know people are going to get mad that you're giving out things that take years to understand. But at the end of the day, you know, if someone, if a kid can come in at 20 years old and kick your ass, then you deserve it, man. That, absolutely. I like to think that's what absolutely. I did because I started my company at 20. And, you know, five years later, you know, I happen to think, you know, we're doing a pretty damn good job. And I put a couple of people on their toes and I feel like I've helped make people better and they've made me better. For sure. 100%, man. I, I mean, again, that raising the bar across the whole mobile DJ industry is what I'm trying to do. And, you know, we've all seen these full, full-blown full Facebook groups that are dedicated to bad setup. Yep. Or, you know, the videos on YouTube or the parodies on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, exactly. you got to do better. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. I mean... Yeah, no. The DJ's Vault, check it out. Absolutely, check it out, Joe. We want to thank you so much for coming on. Again, this is the Q Points Mobile DJ Podcast. Catch us here every single week at noon. We will see you guys again next week. Thank you, guys.